Nightclubs are closing again after Christmas. Also, all the one-way systems and like social distancing and like lines outside shops and everything are coming back. Which isn't as bad as nightclubs closing, to be honest, but is like affects me more on a daily basis, to be honest. Like having to like queue outside the grocery store in the freezing cold. I think I I think I might need to go book shopping. Like I know that I've been really good lately and that from January I'm going to definitely be good but I just feel like I've had a knock today. <laughs> also I was really really anxious about stuff yesterday like I had like peak anxiety in my working situation yesterday. <laughs> I had like a mini panic attack like I feel like I just need to go visit the books. Like not bring any home or maybe bring one home I don't know but just visit the books just be with the books like at the big one at the big one in town i need to go to the big bookstore in town and just touch the books okay so i was talking a couple days ago about unconventional book lists right like unconventional book awards i think i've got one how about best terrible decision like the whole book is about terrible things happening and they all hinge on one person doing one very stupid thing. Okay, number three best terrible decision. Like the main guy, like the main dad guy in the cormorant, right? So this book is about this like wild animal cormorant with seriously bad evil vibes like just wrecking havoc with this family and like their house and their baby and like all this sort of stuff and like it all hinges on this guy being like you know it would be a good idea getting a wild animal as a pet okay number two best terrible decision um the main character the girl in home before dark by riley sega so the whole book is about this girl has a terrible experience in a haunted house when she's a child and the family flees in the night um, and then, when she's an adult, she inherits the house and goes back. Everyone's like, don't go back, don't go back, terrible things will happen to you. She's like, this will be fine. Okay, number one best terrible decision in Hex. Um, I can't remember the author of this one, but I'll put it up. So it's this witch. She's like haunting this town. You can see her and everything, but she can't see you because at some point somebody's put something over her eyes because her eyes like curse you or like make you do terrible stuff to other people. So she's got a bandage over her eyes and like her mouth is like um, inked shut or like tied shut so that she can't like curse you with whispers or anything. And she just sort of like goes about the town. Everyone knows that she goes about the town and they like have her on an app and stuff. Everything in the town is about not pissing off the witch and just sort of like letting her be by herself. But at some point this kid's like, you know what I'm gonna do? Throw stones at the witch and really piss her off. And then it, it sort of sets her off and makes her like attack everyone in the town. Um, simply because he, he was a dick to her. He like threw stones at her, he had like a dog attacker. Like, uh, that's the worst decision. Best terrible decision of the year. My friend got me in our little like secret Santa thing and she's just dropped off like, um, just dropped off my gift thing and it's fucking banging. It's amazing. So, uh, like a sweet notebook, like a bitchin' pen with multiple colours, okay? 
any of these like had seltzer things like you know uh, banging okay banging and then also little jewelry bits oh my god they're books can you see it holy shit books and booze oh my god she understands me so well <laughs> Okay, small book haul. Very small, very small book haul. Um, I am conscious now, every time I buy a book, that I have to remember to then add it to my number, you know, like the tally of books that I do on my spreadsheet. Like, and it, it is helping me to like feel guilty about having to add that number. And I have decided as well now that the goal for next year isn't just to have fewer books coming in that are going out. It's to knock my 182 unread books down to at least 100. That's the goal, okay? I want it to be under 100. I want it to be two figures. Um, so uh, going toward that goal today is a setback, but I feel better. Like <clears throat> I was in a bad place. <laughs> I was feeling sad um, and getting on my bicycle, wind in my face, bit of exercise down to the bookstore where all my people are. You know, people like busying around buying like bookish Christmas presents for their bookish mates. Like, it was just delightful. I got a few books, just a few, just a few, um, and then came back. And I, I feel good. I'll make sure I add those books to my tally. <sighs> okay, the haul. Okay, starts with Hello, Friend, We Missed You by Richard Owen Roberts. So I found this guy in the Wales section, which is like the section where they have like uh, Welsh authors. Welsh language stuff, stuff that takes place in Wales, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why it is that I love that section so much. Um, I've just found so many brilliant books there that are like completely underrated and like underappreciated and they're just fab. So I've I've never heard of this one, um, but it, it's billed as hilarious and insightful. Uh, it's story, which unfolds on the small Welsh island of Morn, of people armed with every social media completely failing to communicate, is far, far funnier than it has any right to be. It's also ultimately extremely moving, an incredible debut novel from a truly unique prose stylist. I feel like this is giving me vibes, like, uh, like millennials. We're a millennials in adulthood, you know, this I feel is going to capture us very well, and that's the kind of mood I'm in at the minute. Okay, next one. Uh, the Minotaur Takes a Cigarette Break by Stephen Sherrill. I've also never heard of this one, uh, but it was on the cult classic table, which I feel more and more this year has become my table. Okay. Um, it's about the Minotaur. You know the guy. Um, he's working as a line chef at Grubb's Rib in Carolina, uh, keeping his horns down, trying in vain to put his past behind him. He leads an ordered lifestyle in a shabby trailer park where he tinkers with cars, writes and rewrites to-do lists, and observes the, ha the haphazard goings on around him. Outwardly controlled, M tries to hide his emotional turmoil as he's transported deeper into the human world of deceit, confusion, and need. Like, how weird. You know, it just feels weird, you know, and a bit dark. A poetic testament to the wild, unchartable experience of human loving and at once melancholy and deeply affirming. Okay, I'm excited. Okay, next one. Stephen King, Salem's Lot. Okay, now that I've fully accepted that I'm a Stephen King fan, reading like the backs and like the blurbs and the reviews of all of his like backlist ones, 
Like, I just, uh, they all just sound amazing. This one is his vampire one, which I'm for. I was watching Vampire Diaries with my kid the other day, and it just, just reminds me, I love the vampire stories, okay? Uh, Salem Slot's a small New England town, blah, blah, blah. Uh, ben Mears has returned to the lot to write a novel and exercise the terrors that have haunted him since childhood, blah, blah, blah. Finds the house has been rented by a newcomer, a man who causes Ben some unease. And then things start to happen. A child disappears. A dog is brutally killed. Nothing unusual, except the list keeps growing. Bum, bum, bum. Last one. I actually got from a charity shop, which I feel good about. Okay, it was pretty cheap. And it's one that Bert and I are going to read in January for the... Now, that's what I call Summer Readathon. It's Moonraker by Ian Fleming. And it's um the Bond one that happens in space. That's right. When Ian Fleming quit naval intelligence in 1945, he had a plan to write the spy story to beat all spy stories. Uh, for several minutes, he stood speechless, his eyes dazzled by the terrible beauty of the greatest weapon on Earth. He's a self-made millionaire, head of the Moonraker rocket program, and loved by the press. So why is Sir Hugo Drax cheating at cards? Bond has just five days to uncover the sinister truth behind a national hero in Ian Fleming's third 007 adventure. <laughs> Ta-da! I will not lie to you. This was super hard. 